Joe Livingston? Here. Tim Mapp? Here. Joe Howard? Here. Ian Petroslavs? Here. Patricia Beckelwald? Here. Joseph Beecha? Okay, first on the agenda is a uh, motion to accept the minutes of the May 22nd meeting as printed. Are there any additions to the directions of the Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. We do have a crowd tonight. Uh, this planning commission has been working on a Baldwin Street project to hope to eliminate flooding since March 2016. We've been dealing with a planning consultant for two or three months named Carolyn Yeager, who was here in May uh, and made a presentation. We were informed she was to be here tonight. As you can see, she's not. Uh, we have been informed she will be at the August meeting. As you can also see, Lori Collins, the borough manager, who's been dealing with Caroline, is ill and not here tonight either. So therefore, there's really nothing on the agenda per se. Uh, however, I know there's people that want to speak, and I've been thinking about this all day as to how to approach it uh, for tonight's meeting as a, maybe a summary of where we're at so far. <clears throat> Through the planning consultant, we were given four different choices, concepts, for uh, some flood remediation, remediation, whatever, remediation, thank you, uh, down through Baldwin and McLaughlin. The most expensive was concept four, and that's the one that we've kind of been delving into, thinking that it would do the most relief. <laughs> As a summary, it, it involves uh, removing the northern side of Baldwin Street as we now know it. It would be all those properties, building, contents, land, would be turned into a holding pond of sorts. Uh, McLaughlin Creek, as we know it, would be reconfigured with some more S's in it to hold more water. And that northern side of Baldwin would hold water coming down from the block. Uh, at the same time, Bowerville Road would be reconfigured uh, in front of uh, BJ's Deli uh, and would basically take over Baldwin Street. As we know it, Baldwin would go away. There would be a roundabout sort of uh, in front of BJ's uh, where the Protec Auto Blast place is. Circle through Bruce's Auto, go on down Baldwin as we know it, sort of bend at the beer warehouse and go to another roundabout near Sill Hall. Flower Hill Road as we know it, gone. Uh, the creek would be deepened, dredged, esked, etc. Uh, the southern side of Baldwin would be open for redevelopment down the road. The first, the northern side being a short-term project, if you will, and the southern side being a long-term project. We got some estimates at the May meeting of uh, what it would cost to do so, not including land and or building acquisition. And that estimate was somewhere between 30 and 33 million dollars plus the land and building acquisition. So you'll know we as a planning commission are all volunteers up here. And we receive information, we make recommendations to council, and then it's up to council what they want to do from that point on. Uh, and with that thought in mind, before I go to visitors, since there was basically nothing on the uh, agenda, and that summary, that I've given you. Uh, is there anybody who would like to ask a question at this point in time before we go to the visitors? You're first. Yes. Sir. You're first on the visitors. Hey, I want to ask you a different question. If you guys looked into uh, <clears throat> that 1980 
a study that I read at the meeting from DEP in Harrisburg mentioned that much of the problem <coughs> in Bridgeville is due to the building in the Upper St. Clair and Buffalo Park. Uh, a couple of us drove around up in that area last Friday for about three hours, and we didn't see very many water retention pumps. Have you looked into, have you looked into that yet? No. That would be no. a good idea. It should, no. yeah, it should be coordinated. Uh, one of the uh, also suggestions, if I may add, by Mr. Deckelwell last meeting was basically taking the McLaughlin Park ball field, digging it down, and turning it into a retention pond. Great idea. However, we were informed that there's coal seams underneath there. And that would be uh, a problem that we might have to address should there be coal underneath it. Uh, Mr. Livingston and I talked about it briefly yesterday. Uh, so cold, what the heck, you know? Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, could you give me some idea what the range of compensation would be for the homeowners in this place on Walnut Street? Regarding property value? How they would be compensated for turning on their property? Right now, that has not been determined. We know what the assessed value on those properties are now on this northern side of Baldwin Street. That wouldn't be replacing them. I'm sure it would not. We only know assessed value. Okay, and the land would become more valuable if it's turned over for the public. Theoretically. I would think you, know, you might want to consider the median home value in the county as a compensation. Well, again, we only recommend to council based upon what's recommended to us by the planning consultant. Okay. Well, she's not here. She'll be here supposedly in August. <clears throat> there, there's the value of the property that you're willing to live on, and there's the value that you'd be willing to move to. As well as the value of the land, which was taken. And as well as that value. And True. I would think you know, a just compensation would be at least immediate. <laughs> well, again, we have to wait till the planning consultant comes along and gives us an estimate. Uh, again, we know assessed value, but that's all we know right now. Uh, concerning the assessed value, we got letters saying that we could have our property assessed downward for the purposes of uh, local tax or county tax. And wouldn't that be kind of shooting ourselves in the foot if we have our property values lowered and then... Then that course would lower your taxes. Again, that's up to you. Yeah, but then when it's time to compensate you for the loss of your property, your value, your property value is going down. True. True. I mean, if you can get a temporary <coughs> one... Wait, Mary, wait a Okay. For your information, and this is why I'm here tonight, we at the Historic Society have been helping with other problems that have cropped up in the borough. We have rather thorough files. And the one that reached out and bit me, it's going to be published out in mail Friday, email Friday also. 1874, the exact same thing happened from Upper St. Clair all the way into Bridgeville. Farms, farmers, Everything was killed. Everything. Before you go too far spending more money, you might want to really work on Upper St. Clair. Well, again, and remember, we started, don't spend the money. We recommend the council. They spend the money. I understand that. As you know. But, uh, and, but the other and, thing and I know that you have a feeling, as many people do, that the problem's coming from Upper St. Clair. Not altogether. 50% of it. But if it's a recurring thing, such as 1874 and, and this year, 2018, then we have a problem with our neighbor, as well as ourselves. But we are going to start tomorrow in the over here, the history center, going through all the files on flooding in Bridgeville to see what we can come up with. I'm sure there's a lot of files. Oh, it's a big file. <laughs> You're going to be there all day. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Pryor, yes, you were the first to sign in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, think, I think you're on the right track. 
Definitely. I, I, I caught, I'm disappointed that the ladies are here, but I think about a year or so ago, I, I watched the initial presentation, and I think it's uh, a good idea, but I wanted to, I think, I think, uh, as Mary alluded to, we all know, this isn't just a regional problem, it's a regional problem, and I'm, I'm trying to figure a way to get uh, for St. Clair and Bridgeville and then all the other communities to feel a sense of responsibility about what's happening here. And based on the plan that I saw here uh, quite a while ago, what I did was, excuse me, I drew this up. And this is uh, obviously Barbara Road. But rather than, uh, rather than making this area between the road and, uh, and Baldwin Street just uh, a waste area, I turned it into a 250 possible parking lot that might attract retail stores on the uh, south side of Baldwin Street. Uh, but the other thing uh, that I'm trying to do in terms of spreading costs to other communities in Edmondson and Bridgeville, to see these red dots, those are the main roads that the people in Upper St. Clair and um, uh, Ethel Park used to get through Bridgeville to get to and from I-79. Painters run and they can done by her road, which is obvious. McLaughlin, Cook School, and uh, Station Street is just another word for Bank Street, Bayview Road. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm suggesting uh, alleviating, making part of the flood solution project, part of it being a traffic reduction project for two or three different communities. And I think you might be able to get funding from different sources. And <clears throat> excuse me, I just, I, I've contacted the Army Corps of Engineers, which is to drop these drawings off to them in a couple of days. But obviously, I, I just put the crick channel much wider, much deeper in the tunnel. I don't know if that's possible, but someone here mentioned the sharp turns. There's no doubt about it. The hydraulics engineers will tell you that when you have three sharp 90 degree turns in the crick, right, we have a problem. Right? I just want to show you. An alternative to that is, excuse me, this is, I guess, a less expensive way of doing it. I just have um, uh, Bower Hill Road made uh, one way, two lanes from the Baldwin Road intersection down to Washington Avenue, and Baldwin Street made one way, two lanes, one in the opposite direction. Once again, the red dots show where people are pouring to the community, and like uh, improvements like putting a traffic light at the intersection of McLaughlin and uh, uh, Bower Hill Road, another traffic light at the intersection of Railroad Street and so on. But, <clears throat> Concepts like this might be added to the traffic lights are part of the program. I'm glad to hear that. And what I, what I would love to see is uh, the gentleman who's inquiring about uh, reuse of the land on Baldwin Street in uh, Park Road. Uh, I, I did this five years ago. This just shows uh, Baldwin, this is where Blackman Run, or this is Fire Road, and that's Baldwin Street. This just shows you what's possible. But we have to be really aggressive convince the county, the feds, the state, and the county that this is a regional problem. The only thing they're interested in, the funding agencies that represent those three entities, as you know, all they care about is, just like PennDOT, who we'll invest money in something that's going to return federal, state, and county tax revenues to us. And that, I think you might be able to expand the original flooding problem into these, these other total three areas. I'll leave this for if you want to get <coughs> Susan Adams. I wasn't really planning to talk today, but I'm just going to talk for a minute or two. I want to thank the people for looking into this. I'm Susan Abbott, and I am from Upper St. Clair. It's my sister, Wendy Abbott, that was pulled and killed in this flood. I'm here because I care, and I'm here, I'm trying to collect more facts and information. I'm really working on this. This is a long problem. I know that we we're too late. My sister died in this. She got out of her car, like you might have, in the pouring rain. Only about an hour and a half rain, by the way, not all that much, in Upper Sinclair, and began to walk home. 
she was sucked into a flush of water that was released. We're trying to find out what that is. It was at least four feet, and it was at least 50 miles per hour. And it took my sister down into that cavern, and she went two miles, her body, and died. And she was found be behind the fire department at Bridgeville. I'm Susan Abbott. I moved here from Dallas, Texas. I'm taking care of my parents now, 95 and 91, that Wendy used to do, my beloved sister. This is a long-term problem from Upper St. Clair. This is a long-term problem from Bridgeville. It needs to be solved. It will be solved, I'm, I feel very sure. I lost my sister over this. This is very important to me. So I'm here to learn and listen and just make this comment that that was my sister that walked or tried to walk home. This must never happen to anyone else ever again. You must do what you need to do to fix this properly. If you've been working on it since 2006, I commend you, but you're too late. And so is Upper Sinclair. They're too late because there is an issue between all of this. Thank you for letting me speak for a moment. I care very much about this. I'm living and breathing it right now, as you might if it was your sister that was just killed, or your wife, or one of your children that was trying to simply walk home. She was very close to her home. The water was at least four feet high and it was traveling over 50 miles an hour. What was that? Thank you. That. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for letting me be here. Yes. I really care. You know, it brings home that point. Mr. Chairman, there are 365 days in the year. I'm here to ask you, to plead with you, to use more than 12, more than 11 of them for planning commission meetings. I recognize that you are all volunteers, but please, let's not wait until the end of August. Please, schedule another meeting sometime in August. Get Carolyn here. We can do better. We can move just a little faster than the glacial pace of government. Please. That's all we can do. You that's what you came to say? Well, no, I came to say a whole lot of other things about the plan and the concept and the rest of it, and it all makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, I see what we have here. We've got a lot of ideas. Yes, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yes, it's going to change our community. But it's going to change it for the better. We can do it. We have traction both from Allegheny, all from Allegheny County, from the state. We have traction on this. It's possible to do it. But we need to have... Something more than just the concepts we've been working on. Again, we can get something on paper, something that the community can react to, that our legislative bodies can start to work on funding for. We can move forward. In the absence of a plan, we will possibly repeat the same pattern that we have many times, which is, we have the dumpsters. It, 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 we just we, we move forward. We have bridges that will be replaced with bridges that will have the same problems, and we won't we won't solve the overall plant problem. We won't create exactly what you so eloquently described. Again, I thought your description was in some ways better than anything Carolyn's brought to this meeting. You did a fantastic job of explaining an idea. And we could really get there. And we will get there, but we can get there faster. So thank you. Good. Thank you for being here. That you well known, we have here 
the majority of councils here. Actually, yeah. we have everybody except one. Yeah. As you can see. <coughs> councils being very busy, not only because of this. I mean council as well. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about that. We have the president of council can tell we've been having meetings with all the government agencies, local, government, state. <coughs> yes. We work on a bridge, we work on a clover, we work on Upper St. Clair. We have a messenger, high facial messenger, to go to Upper St. Clair. Please, call Bridge with Bridgeville. Mr. Chair, yes, maybe you like this. Is. We, we had a, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll share this. We had a meeting uh, last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago tomorrow. Two weeks ago tomorrow. Um, we have Army Corps of Engineers here uh, mm -hmm. and several uh, members of the Yagi uh, County. Um, they're going to talk to the County Manager today. The schedule of uh, Paula meeting. Um, we're going to find key areas that we feel uh, there are issues in, in the flight. You know, they said, oh, we should probably do a study. And my comment to them was, beg your pardon, if we go to a meet the next meeting in August and say they're going to do a study, our citizens are going to kill us. They don't want to hear that we're doing a study. They want to hear what are we doing as a plan. So if we look at key areas, um, you know, Bridgeville's been flooded many, many times. It's always flooded in the same spots. Uh, a couple things we're looking at is um, the bridge right here obviously is, is a dam. Whenever we have a flood event, the debris comes down the creek and it catches there and it floods Baldwin Street. But we also have flooding right back here too. So behind the um, block and run or the block and creek where it hits the back channel, there's a lot of sediment going up. That's in our Corps is trying to look in and see that's part of the Holden flood project. And that's just to be cleaned out. If it's not cleaned out and we had flooding, we have major flooding back here as well. Um, so those are, those are key areas where we're looking at the causes. Um, the, the, the debris, what's that? Yes. The debris that's coming down is, is obviously a big issue of where, where we're getting this flooding. So we're asking Upper St. Clair to clean their creeks. We, we clean, our borough, our borough workers maintain our creek banks. We go in, we get the, we get the uh, um, permission of the property owners to go in, remove trees, uh, any type of you know, lumber, trees, whatever's in there. So whenever there is a flood event, it doesn't end up down here and, tur and turn into a, uh, a dam. You go up the block and past Bridgeville, you look in the creek bed, you'll see all kinds of debris in there. So we're at, we went up, we'd like up to Clair to clean their creek, number one. We're also, we, have, we applied for a permit um, for uh, McLaughlin Park, we're putting a, a trash bin or a trash catcher right there at the, at the uh, bend of the creek, and then we're looking to actually lose our park, our ball, not our park, but our ball field, get rid of our ball field, and make that a retention pond. So when there is a flood event, if the debris comes down, it catches there, and it dams up there, and the water fills in the retention and does not continue to come down. Um, we would like, we told the Allegheny County uh, to talk about St. Clair. Uh, there's 20.57 acres that we all know that's sitting right there off of um, McLaughlin Run. That is, they're trying to sell it and develop it to properties. We feel that's a very bad uh, choice for that piece of property. Mm -hmm. It should be a retention line. That's right. And, and uh, Ms. Abbott, it's, you talk about a wall of water that came down. Yes. You know, I, there were, if you saw it during that flood event at where Outback Steakhouse was. Yes, I did. Was basically a holding pond. Unbelievable. And then those cars block up that <coughs> polis and uh, which way? The tunnels. The tunnels there. And when that broke tunnel was that broke close, that's when, yep. we believe that's where that wall of water came. And that, that was supposed to be done. So I mean, there's, there's, there's I mean, you, you can do a study all you You're want. Right. You know, it's good to do studies. You've got to know your and, facts and this, before and you and jump and forward. And I'm so, you know, the project that this planning commission has, 
you know, it's a very grandiose project and it would be phenomenal for this town. But we're a small little community. You know, our budget each year is $3 million and you're talking about a project that's 30 million for our community and it's, you know, it's, it's real easy to sit there and say, oh, just do it, this needs to happen. Yeah, it, it, it can happen, it, it, something that needs to happen, but we're looking at hey, what can we do right now? So right now, what we're looking, what we're trying to focus on is a couple easy things. Clean out the creek, and that's just manpower. That's having people go in and manpower. Down here, where the back, the back channel is, get that taken care of. Manpower again. Our catch basin at the ballpark, that again is um, cost money, but that's we're asking the we're asking the county to help us accelerate the permit process because it can take up to eight months. We obviously would like to get it done now, you know, as soon as possible. So, we're, and that's not an expensive fix. That's not a, that's not a big ex expense for us. We can do that. And then the bridge project, we're we're asking the county to help us with the bridge down here to to. It's, they're telling us that the bridge is not defective, or not defective efficient, but we're going to say it's a bad design. You know, we, know, we, know the bridge is, we know the bridge is functional, and it's not going to break or anything like that, it's not going to cave in, but the bridge is not a, it's a bad design. So we're asking for help for that. That's, that project's a little more expensive. That's, now we're talking, you know, two million dollars, three million dollars for that in the, in the top set. So those are areas that we're focusing on right now. As far as for St. Clair, we're asking them to look at those. I mean, Outback Steakhouse is is uh, condemned. Don't put something back in there. Though. Fix it. Use use it for water retention. We're we're supposed to be meeting with um, Bethel Park and hopefully Upper St. Clair. Bethel Park has already reached out to us because it is a regional thing, like like Mr. Pryor said. It's a regional problem. It isn't a regional problem. It's not another St. Clair problem. It's not about the water problem. It's all of our. It's it's the whole watershed coming down and blocking that. So we're trying to work. We are trying to work together with all three communities to come up with a solution. Um, you know, like I said, we don't want to be we're a small little community with limited budget. I'm not saying upper St. Clair has a lot more money than we do, but you know, could they sacrifice a 20 acres? You know. It's easy for us to say, yeah, sure, why don't you just sacrifice that 20 acres and do something with it? Um, the, the Outback Steakhouse, yeah, I know that's a nice piece of property, but maybe you could sacrifice that too. I mean, they just they took a nice, up by Whole Foods, and they got a nice little urban center up there. Maybe you can give up one. You know, I know, I know Bridgeville, if, they, if you told us that, hey, if we had to sacrifice, you know, a couple of parcels of property and it was going to fix a problem, we would do that in a second. Yes, sir. Do you know what the county's budget is for the refurbish refurbishment project? Uh, yeah, we're we're back on that. Because if it's two million to replace it, then why waste money refurbishing it? Well, that, well that's, exactly, that's, that's, exactly, that's, that's exactly what we told them. They, they asked them to put it on hold. Yeah, we did tell them to put it on hold. Don't do anything refurbish. Find out what those numbers are. So just like we did, just like the bridge project down here, when they, when the Pentagon was going to do a little bit of a project to it, we said, hold on. You know, you're, you're going to put money into this bridge. Let's see about fixing it. You know, so if, if they have a power, you know, a certain amount of money budget for it, let's see what we need to get to the next level to fix the bridge. You know, so don't waste, don't put, you know, good money in bad. So, so that's where we're at. Um, I hope I hope I answered some of your questions. Yes, sir. Is there any uh, word on FEMA money, or is that off the board? We have not given. We have not been given an official yes or no that FEMA is going to be declaring a national disaster or disaster area. Right. But I mean, I'm not going to say yes or no. But I don't. It doesn't look. Doesn't look like it's going to hit that 18 point. Because uh, I thought point. maybe they were going to combine the communities yes. and all that. And that's not happening. Anymore. I don't believe it. It's two different green areas. I'm sorry, you're, you're absolutely correct. I'm not sure everybody in the world agrees with that. This is not a time for another three-year study. We need someone like the Army Corps of Engineers who knows all of the dimensions of all these bridges, like the Culvert, the Bower Road Bridge. We need them to create a, a, a 
a solution <laughs> that, that, will, that will eliminate a lot of the problems. The Army Corps of Engineers who was here, they, there was, two, there was a, um, two members of the Army Corps that was here, and they are already, they have been studying. Yeah, because you, we're part of the, the other group that yep. you guys have been meeting with, mm -hmm. and so, they, they've been studying it uh, as part of North Fayette and uh, the Shark Tooth Valley uh, Flood Corridor. Yeah. yeah, that's been going on. They've been they've been doing it, and Oakdale and all that's part of that group that has been meeting with the Army Corps, trying to solve all the problems from that direction too. So, so. And incidentally, so, like down in New Orleans after the Katrina flood, what they did was they didn't sacrifice other parks and athletic fields. You're right; they lowered them, but they put the equipment right back on there, well, ten feet lower. So you might be able to save. Them. We thought about doing that, you know, just drop it down two feet, but yeah. you know, that, that'd be nice. I mean, if you could do that, yeah. I mean, we only have one field. You know, if we if we had multiple fields, you know, if we were a big city and you had, you know, say, you had an area that had six soccer fields, you know, that's a lot of volume. We have one baseball field. We're going to maximize it. We're going to give up the field. We have other fields where they can play softball. And they will be perfectly fine at Chartier's Park. But that, that's a good possible solution. Yes. <coughs> yes, sir, Pat. Uh, if I may interject, Mr. Polino, you also wanted to speak. I'm um, satisfied with you, but I don't know thank you. Okay. At the Oakdale meeting, uh, Mike from the Army Corps of Engineers said that the baseline study that uh, was being conducted in Bridgeville uh, would be done by December. Uh, do we have any possibility of combining the baseline study with something more specific? In other words, let's find out obviously what the baseline is, but let's do the hydraulics uh, to, to, uh, to determine what we need as far as retention. I'd have to ask. Yeah. I, my only question, I have only two questions. The, uh, is there a timetable for the plans that you're looking at, and are those plans available to the public to see? Oh, yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, the, we started working on this March 2016. Yes, the plans are available. These are all public meetings. The, the, anybody can attend the club. So, yes, plans are available. Drawings are available. No problem. Uh, on a personal note, I was out in it that night, driving with my wife <coughs> near Morrow Road. And I said, uh, uh, and I turned around and got out of it. Uh, I came a different direction to get into Bridgeville. Before Bower Hill itself got flooded, we got through it. And then, of course, the crap hit the fan later on that night. Yes, I'm a United Methodist. The Bridgeville Methodist Church was the center of, of response and help. And I worked it for 10 straight days now. So, I mean, a lot of work went into helping people after the fact, unfortunately. Is there any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. About the FEMA and the $18.1 million threshold number, do they ever come back and reevaluate? Because I know when they came through and asked Jenny and I, what was your loss? It was what, within four years? I mean, they were here quick. That, that part was frankly amazing. But even by the FEMA adjusters numbers who came in and walked through her building, I was off by a very large factor at the number that I threw out there. And frankly, the number I threw out was looking at just product. So I don't know. If, I mean, it's really hard to ask somebody what your number is when you're standing in, standing in at half a foot of mud. Um, the, the response then being there, that was encouraging. But. If I knew what the number was then, that I know is now, I don't know if I would have taken the same course of action because it's it's it's, it's a, not even a fraction. But maybe there's a lot more people in the same situation yeah, as us, sure. so that number could be up a lot more at this sure. point. It just seems, you know, it was my best guess, but my focus was really on the fact that July 4th was coming up in a week. Mm. Or, you know, a week and a half or so. And um, I wasn't really thinking about what all really went down. And, and that's just one small little business. I mean, I missed it by a large factor. And I kind of become pretty good at numbers. I'll ask Lori if, 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 if 
think would go. I, I, just, I don't know. I, just, but, just, if you're I hear you. Would it make a difference or not? Yeah, right? you know, absolutely. It, it might be worth asking them because I know we weren't. We weren't. I thought we'd been through a flood of five Wednesdays beforehand. That was a springtime shower. Mm -hmm. That was four feet of water. Back up into that handle of flood. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mike Nixon from Missouri Avenue. In regards to uh, the 18.1 threshold number for federal emergency management uh, recovery, probably the best thing to do, since they haven't made a decision yet, is alert them immediately, like tomorrow morning. We have new information to supplement the data that you have, um, or the cost mm -hmm. estimates you originally obtained uh, are, are much lower, and uh, ask them to gather or allow time for whatever to supplement with new info and figure out the protocol for that. That's pretty normal for any kind of federal decision making. It's a lot harder after they decide to get them to reconsider, <clears throat> but I mean, they're pretty busy, so if you're going to tell them, hey, we got. And if you if you really fear that they're, it's going to be short, don't risk it. You can get that little bit extra time if you really think you can hit that threshold number. You can give it a shot. It shouldn't take too much longer to do that. I mean, if it's like an extra month versus never, you know. And hey Mike, you know what I try? I make it clear that Bridgeville is an exception to the 18 million limit, wherever it is, in terms of the number of times this has happened. And we're a low, medium to low income, essentially community. Average income is fifty-five thousand dollars per year. Community. I think they should make an exception in the process. I'd approach it. Yes, sir. Yeah, I keep saying. Well, I never talked to people. You know, never come to so they don't have my numbers either. If I might, on the, on the concept or the, the discussion about FEMA, you know, like, even if we exceed that 18 million threshold, it's not going to do very much for the residents. But FEMA does, does have another program. I don't know if you had or did not have flood insurance, but FEMA has a program to help dry proof properties, what, but as they said at the Oakdale meeting, the best way to flood proof a home is to remove the home. And that comes back to your question of what kind of compensation, what kind of value, and their answer was, we work with FEMA, again, this is coming from Mike at the Oakdale meeting, FEMA will work with you on a voluntary basis to acquire the property. They'll They'll work with you. Again, it's voluntary. Big, bold letters, voluntary. But that voluntary program combined with the plan that the Planning Commission has been working on could dovetail very nicely. Good. It, absolutely. Good. And was, FEMA requires that program to be done at the local level. They don't want to impose. They're saying, do it at the local level, and once you acquire the property, you must use it for conservation, which is exactly what Bridgeville is planning to do. So it might be a great time for us to get FEMA into Bridgeville on that on, on the program to acquire properties. I know Lori has tirelessly tried to do it and been stymied in prior attempts because how did it, how was it stated, Mike? What they, what they tell you is that it, it's a it's a basic numbers game. You know, the value of the property is X, the cost to acquire the property is Y, and it's upside down and it isn't worth, it isn't worth them to, to acquire those well, properties. It, it, somewhat from reciprocal, that it doesn't flood enough. It isn't bad enough. Right. You know, first floor flooding, it wasn't enough. To, well, I think we've now exceeded those thresholds, not just on Baldwin Street, but also on the block it would be worth our time to ask them to come in. Again, Mr. Chairman, this may be a venue for it. Because the Planning Commission is tasked with recommending the council, perhaps this might be a venue 
to have FEMA come in and look at working cooperatively for FEMA to, acquire, to, to fund the borough's acquisition of properties to be utilized. Well, the community is only one mile square, and you're, that federal law applies to major cities. I don't know how they expect us to accrue 18 million in losses. That's well, it's not just well, it's not just bridge all 18 million. It's it's that I mean that, that on that date on June 20th, Bridgeville got flooded, Upper Saint Clair got flooded, uh, Bethel, South Park. South Park, Banksville Road. It's everybody. Everybody. If if somebody got flooded in Scranton on that day, that would be part of the same event in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. So it isn't just Bridgeville. Okay. Uh, having said that, we've gone through a lot today and tonight. Without the planning consultant here and or the borough manager, uh, we've gone about as far as we can go tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that Caroline can come next month. I know you made your comment, Pat, regarding getting her here sooner. That's between Lori and her. I have no problem and having a meeting, say, in two weeks, you know, or whatever the case may happen to be. If she can come back with the rest of the proposal. That's I, up to I completely agree with that on yeah. that also. I'll talk to Lori tomorrow. Yeah, I have, I have no problem with you know, having a special meeting. If, and, and I hope that Carolyn will be here tonight. Yes. But it is what it is. Having said that, we have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor. Thank you all for coming.